So hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I want to show you how to make this guy. This lapel microphone that I'm using right now to record this video with. Now it costs about five to ten dollars in parts to make, and that's excluding shipping and taxes, which could be quite a bit more money. Considering that if you're just looking for a cheap lapel microphone, you're probably better off ordering something from Amazon for ten to twenty dollars. So I had some objectives when I was building this microphone. One was that I wanted it to use a stereo left and right. Uh, 3.5 TRS cable, not a smartphone cable, not a, a mono cable, but a left and right stereo TRS cable. So the next important thing for me was to have a microphone that had a high signal to noise ratio. Many of the microphones I saw on Amazon had around 60 decibel, maybe 65 decibels of signal to noise. And that really isn't good enough for me. I was really hoping for something 70 or 80 decibels. So the next thing that was important to me was cable length. I didn't want something too long or too short. I wanted it just long enough to go from my shirt down to my pockets. And so that was about a meter, meter and a half. The next part was pretty important to me and that was a microphone that did not require an external battery pack. Many of the lapel microphones I have do require an external battery, but the Zoom H1 does provide a little bit of power, uh, 2.27 volts on the mic in port. So I wanted to pick a microphone capsule for the build that was running around that zone uh, around between two and three volts. So that's what I picked. Last but not least is I wanted the microphone to sound good. And I couldn't listen to the microphones before I ordered them. So I actually ordered several. Um, I also looked at the frequency response of the graphs that were available in the technical documents. So I tried to focus on microphones that had a pickup between 20 and 20,000 Hertz. Something that was relatively flat with maybe a little bit of a peak around 10 to 15 kilohertz. Now to build your own lapel microphone, there are some basic requirements. Most importantly though, is you need a microphone capsule. And so this is what I ended up buying, this guy right here. And this is a $5 US per single microphone capsule. You can get them a lot cheaper, a dollar per piece if you buy in bulk. And on the back of it, it looks like this. I soldered it to some wires. It does not come pre-soldered, so you will need a soldering iron and a little bit of basic soldering skills. So I picked up my microphone capsule from a site called Digikey, D-I-G-I-K-E-Y dot com, and that was about $5 US to pick up the capsule plus shipping. It was one of the more expensive capsules, so there's many available that are much cheaper. And if you're willing to buy in bulk, the price drops quite a lot too. Now I would recommend generally that you have a soldering station that has a temperature control just so that when you're soldering the microphone capsule you don't overheat it and damage it. So you also need some solder. You also want an audio cable, something that has three poles, one, two, three, that's 3.5 millimeters. You can generally get these maybe at the local dollar store and when, when buying ones, buy something that is pretty thick cable, something that if it's too thin it might be too hard to solder, so something that's thicker and heavier duty might be easier. Now if you're trying to build exactly what I'm building, you might want to get a Zoom H1N also. The lapel microphone we're building will work with other devices, but I am building explicitly for this particular device. Now a few things to note, if you're trying to use a smartphone instead, you will probably want to use a TRRS 4-pole jack rather than this 3-pole jack that I chose. This device also outputs 2.27 voltage, which is in line with the three volt microphone capsule that we selected. Depending on what voltage your device outputs over the mic input port, you might want to go with a different microphone capsule. You can use a multimeter to measure that if you're curious, um, but that's outside the scope of this video. Now that we have everything that we need, let's get building. So the microphone comes in a little bag. It is about 9.7 millimeters in diameter, which is on the larger side. Some of the smaller microphones are quite a bit harder to solder, so be careful about that. I picked up an audio cable from the discount store. This one is about six feet long. I'm cutting it in half, so I have two three-foot lengths. I'll be able to make two microphones this way. So we're going to strip the end of the cable now so that we reveal the three wires inside, left, right, and ground. We're going to cut the right wire off because we only want uh, left and ground. 
Now I'm going to use some double-sided tape to hold the microphone capsule down in place while I solder. And I'll be using these magic arm thingies to hold the wire in place while I solder. It's just a, quite a bit easier to have as much as possible holding things in place for you while you're soldering. Now I chose to use a lead-based solder because it's a little easier to work with. And when I'm soldering, I also make sure the iron isn't too hot. I also try not to solder for more than two or three seconds at a time, else I could burn the microphone capsule. Now you might notice that I'm using an air filter to suck away the fumes. You generally want to solder in a well-ventilated area, so instead I just made my own 3D printed air filter using some computer fans and activated carbon. And that's how the microphone looks when uh, the soldering is done. The soldering pads are well soldered, they're not big blobs. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best job, but uh, do what you can. You might want to buy more than one microphone capsule if you are unsure of yourself. Now to protect the microphone and the solder pads, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue here and this will just give it a little more strength. I don't need much, just a little bit. So now we're ready to test the microphone out. I'm going to use a Zoom H1N to test it out with and as you can see it's only recording to the left channel and that is because we only use the left and the ground cable, not the right cable. We cut that off. So now the last step is just to 3D print out a clip for the microphone just so that you can clip it onto your shirt. I'll share my designs uh, in the descriptions below from hosted on Thingiverse. Uh, I, I spray painted it, it black after, but you can print or paint it however you want. And this is ultimately how the finished product looks. Because I went with an omnidirectional microphone, I can point it any direction I want. In this case, I'm pointing the microphone down. And I can customize the case for the microphone to meet whatever application I want. I would love, love to see any designs you guys make uh, for a clip or a case for the microphone. Uh, lots of possibilities out there, so definitely share those ideas if you have them. And yes, this microphone that we just made here is what I am using to record this video with. So if you like the audio quality, you can check the description below for the for a link to the microphone capsule I used. And yeah, I would love to hear your feedback on whether or not you like the sound. It is a very quiet microphone. I did not apply any noise filtering to this video. So what you hear is what you get. Okay guys, um, thank you for watching and see you next time.